Okay, in this video we are going to talk about rectilinear motion, which is sometimes called particle motion, which is also sometimes called straight line motion. So they're all basically equivalent. Um, and let's take a look at the problem we're going to do. So a particle starts at time t equals zero and moves along the x-axis so that its position at time t is given by x of t equals the quantity t minus two cubed times the quantity t minus six. And then we're gonna answer um, all of these questions. So uh, create a representation of its motion. Uh, when is it moving to the right? When, is, when does it change direction? Is a particle speed increasing or decreasing at t equals 4.5? Um, and then what is the farthest left of the origin that the particle moves? So uh, it's unlikely that you'd be asked all of these in one question, uh, so it's gonna be a little repetitive, but uh, each of these is like fair game for this type of problem. And uh, I adapted all of this from the 1972 AP exam, which is probably way before most of you listening to this or watching this uh, were born. Uh, you can actually get those questions if you go to that website, M-O-E-M-S dot org. Um, it asks for like a $5 donation, but it's optional. And uh, let's, let's get started. So let's see. First question, we want a representation of the particle's motion. Um, and so to do that, we need to know when it turns around, right? So we're going to need to know velocity. So we're going to find V of T. Now, when we're finding V of t, we want to connect it to the position. So we're going to say V of t is x prime of t. And now I'm just going to product rule this. So it's first, uh, derivative of the second, and then plus second, derivative of the first, which is a chain rule problem. So bring the three down, and then subtract, and then technically times one, but we're good. I'm going to factor this a bunch. So I can take out t minus two squared. That leaves me with, um, a t minus two here, and then a three times t minus six, so three t minus 18. And we can collect some stuff to get, uh, there are four t's minus 20. I'm gonna take a four out and kind of rearrange. So we get four, the quantity t minus five, quantity t minus two squared. All right, so that's our velocity. We need to know the turning points. Uh, so that would be uh, the potential turning points are when V of t equals zero. So that's at t equals five and t equals two. Uh, there's actually not a turning point at t equals two because um, velocity doesn't have a sign change, but I'm not gonna worry about that because all I'm doing is looking for a graph of position or, or a representation of uh, motion. So uh, at this point, what I'm gonna do is create a table of values. So t and x of t and I need the endpoints, and I need these critical points that I found, the potential turning points. And I'm gonna substitute in, most of these are kind of easy to substitute, so zero gives you negative eight times six, negative six, negative eight times negative six, so 48. Two is just gonna give you zero. Five gives you a negative 27, and then six is gonna give you zero again. All right, so now we set up our uh, kind of axis, so this is this is position, so this is like an x-axis. And all I really need to put on it are 0, 48, and negative 27, the values that came out of the table. And so let's uh, plot some points. So at t equals 0, we're here. At t equals 2, I'm here. So the next one I'm going to move up a little bit so that I can turn when I kind of draw the motion. So that's at t equals 5, and then back here at t equals 6. And then let's connect them like this, and then let's show the motion. All right, so that's all we would have to do there. And let's take a look at the next part. So we wanna know when is the particle moving to the right and we wanna justify. So I'm gonna borrow the velocity that we found in the last part and I'm gonna actually just make a sign chart for it. So it's V, I'm putting two and five because those are the zeros of velocity and then I'm also gonna put zero because the problem says we start at time t equals zero. Um, now I need to uh, figure out some signs here. So uh, you can do it by substitution. So like if you plug in one, you get uh, a pot. So four is always positive. So you get a positive times a negative times a positive, which overall is negative. If you plug in uh, three, you get a positive, a negative, a positive. So it's still negative, which makes sense because T minus two is to the second power. So there shouldn't be a sign change there. And then uh, plug in like a billion or something and you definitely get positive. Okay, so this is not good enough. Now we're gonna write our answer. So the particle is moving to the right 
when t is greater than five, and then we're gonna say because v of t is greater than zero on that interval. So we state the answer and then we justify it. All right, let's take a look at the next part. So when does a particle change direction and justify? So it's unlikely you'd be asked to answer parts b and c in the same problem. I mean, maybe, who knows? Uh, I'm gonna again borrow my velocity and I'm gonna borrow the sign chart from the previous part. So those are both from the previous part. And you can see from the sign chart that there's actually no change in direction at t equals two. Uh, you're moving to the left and then you're still moving to the left. And then at t equals five, you change from moving to the left to moving to the right. So that's going to be our answer. Uh, so let's write this up. So the particle changes directions, or direction, I guess, changes, I don't know. I put an S there, so it's good. Uh, t equals five. And then because V of T has a sign change there. Um, so we don't need to stipulate that it changes from negative to positive or positive to negative, because we don't really care about that. We just want to know, did it change direction? And so saying there's a sign change says, yes, it changed direction. All right, let's take a look at the next part. So is the particle speed increasing or decreasing at t equals 4.5? All right, so for this, I need to know the velocity at 4.5 and the acceleration. So once again, I'm gonna borrow all the velocity work from previous parts. So we have that, we already have our sign chart. Now I'm gonna deal with acceleration. So same thing, I wanna connect acceleration to velocity or position. I'm gonna connect it to velocity because I already connected velocity to position. All right, so a of t is v prime of t which is, uh, we're gonna product rule this. So I'm gonna say the first function is four times the quantity t minus five, and then the second function is t minus two squared. So first, derivative of the second is a chain rule problem, plus second, which is this. Derivative of the first is actually four because the first function is four times the quantity t minus five, so times four. And we can factor, so I'm gonna take a four out of everything and a t minus two. And then that leaves me with, I have two times t minus five, so that'll be two t minus 10. And then I have just a plus a t minus two. Keep going, so simplify that second parenthesis there. That's three t minus 12. Uh, I don't really need to factor this, but I'm going to. Uh, I don't have a good reason for that. I'm just taking a three out, so 12, quantity t minus two, quantity t minus four. Okay, so that's my acceleration. Let's sign chart that, which by the way, I don't really need to do um, because uh, it's not just asking me like find all intervals, it's specifically at 4.5. I could just plug 4.5 into uh, V of T and into A of T. So that probably would have been a better approach, but I already made the sign chart, so let's do this. Uh, this is a quadratic that opens up, so it's gonna go positive in the first region, then negative, and then positive. That's how I've done that. You can also just substitute values, which is a little safer. So 4.5 um, is in this interval. So I can see velocity is negative and acceleration is positive. So I'm actually ready to answer the question at that point. But I think I probably shouldn't have done this. So instead, a better way of doing it is to actually just find V of 4.5. And so let's substitute. So that's 4 times negative 0.5 times 2.5 squared, which is 4 times negative 0.5 is negative 2. 2.5 squared is 6.25, so multiply negative two times 6.25, we get negative 12.5. And then a of 4.5, it's gonna be 12 times 0.5 times 2.5, which actually works out to 15. So uh, what I did there was I did 12 times 2.5 is uh, 24 plus six, so 30, and then half of that would be 15. Okay, so now we know this. Um, we know that velocity is negative, acceleration is positive, using basically either of these approaches, really. Uh, let's write up our answer. So since V of 4.5 and A of 4.5 have opposite signs, um, the particle speed is going to be decreasing because anytime they have opposite signs, uh, the speed will be decreasing. So the particle speed is decreasing at T equals 4.5. So I think it's important that you actually find the velocity and show that it's negative, find the acceleration, show that it's positive. Don't just like try to assert. Um, so you have to have some work that supports that, in my opinion. Um, and let's take a look at part E. Okay, what is the farthest to the left of the origin that the particle moves? 
This is another one. I don't think you'd be asked this and all of the other questions at the same time, but this is a, a definite fair question to be asked. All right, I think this is just a candidate's question, candidate's test question. So uh, let's apply the candidate's test. So to do that, I need to say that x of t is a continuous function, which it definitely is because it's a polynomial. So x of t is continuous. Therefore, by candidate's test, the absolute minimum, which is really what we're looking for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clarify that. The absolute minimum, and in parentheses I'm going to say the farthest left, um, is going to occur at an endpoint. And we already know the endpoints because those are, uh, give, do we know the endpoints? Uh, you know, when I did this problem, I kind of assumed it was zero to six. Why am I assuming that? Um, oh, you know, I borrowed that from part A. Uh, all right, let's just change the problem and say like the farthest left on the interval from uh, zero to six. You shouldn't do this when you're taking the quiz, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do here. So the endpoints um, are zero and six. <laughs> So there's another argument we could make that uh, on the interval from t equals, uh, what was it? Five to, uh, five to infinity, the particle's moving to the right. So uh, there's no way that you're gonna get another minimum. But uh, anyway, I've changed the problem at this point. So now we're just saying between zero and six. And uh, okay, so or at a critical point, and the critical points we've already found, so I'm gonna say that's when v of t equals zero, which gave us t equals two and t equals five. Um, and so we have this table, I'm gonna borrow it from a previous part, uh, zero, two, five, six, plug them in. So we can say, therefore, the farthest left will be at, uh, will be x equals negative 27, and that's uh, when t equals five. So really I should have said uh, that it's at t equals five, x equals negative 27, because that's uh, the minimum, and then it increases to the right forever after that. But I decided it's better to just change this problem around and say uh, farthest left uh, on the interval zero to six. Anyway, uh, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.